about an hour and a half. Almost about two nine, It's about 90 minutes. We had Klaus Kinski last week, so we went on and on and on. Klaus Kinski? Klaus Kinski. Yeah, he was, he was here, and... Uh, he covered his films last week. He's dead. I know, but we just covered no, his we, films. No, not me. I probably bought him at an auction, and he's here next to me. <laughs> we showed a bunch so, of his trailers and posters and, you know. He was an interesting guy. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Spaghetti Westerns podcast. I am your host, Jay Jennings, Spaghetti Westerns poster and film collector. We're here every week dissecting Spaghetti Westerns, uh, different actors, directors, locations, uh, the best of, the worst of. Uh, we show. We used to show posters and trailers but now Tom and I, we basically, we review films and actors right now, and we get right to the, uh, the heart of the matter, and we show their photos and posters. But anyway, let's introduce the Tonto of Spaghetti Westerns, the one and only Tom Betts. Hi, Tom. Hello, hola. Hola, que tal? Como esta? Como esta, Ted? <laughs> Muy bien. Anyway, <laughs> Tom, you've been looking forward to this uh, episode? Yeah, like Fernando Sancho. I mean, I, I, I counted Aldo did 58 spaghetti westerns, so we can't cover them all. Oh, I thought we, we were, Tom. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> I, I'm disappointed. I thought this was going to be a four-hour marathon. Yeah, easy. Especially with your new heart condition. Yeah, right. Anyway, so uh, actually Tom and I have decided we are going to do the great Aldo Sombrero, which is, you know, we're at episode 60 and we probably should have done this earlier, but good good things come to those who wait. Uh, we're not going to do all 50, how many 54, Tom? 58. 58. Now, we, we picked his 10 best, or the ones that he stood out in. So a lot of them will obviously be omitted, even ones, why didn't you include that? Well, because he's in the background for two seconds. We, we picked the ones that, even, that he basically even starred in, or he has the most screen time. Yeah, or he has memorable roles. I mean, he's on screen for just a few minutes, but his role is key to the uh, the, the the film and the story. So this is why Tom included spaghetti westerns from the '80s. Yep. Right, Tom, like uh, West of the Rio Grande, where he actually is the lead, or something like that. So we're showing the, as I said, not all his films, but the films we think that he is, I guess, uh, featured the best in. Yeah, good representation of his character. Right. So anyway, uh, classic bad guy, plas classic evil character. Yeah, I think he had his eyebrows thicker than anyone can imagine. Yeah, there it is, Tom. It's a little too early to show that, but thank you. But uh, <laughs> we are bringing back some classic segments in the show. We have the weekly news. We have autograph of the week. We, did you just show your autograph of the week, Tom? No. Okay. Uh, we have Book of the Week, and we, Tom, we have the famous Tom's Poster Attic. Where we get to cringe as Tom opens up a poster and shows it and then folds it back together again. Again, I opened them up pre-show, so... Well, that just saves half the tears <laughs> that will happen. That's, that's right. But uh, as I said, great character actor. Tom actually knew him, knew him pretty good. And uh, we'll show a photo where they all got together, Aldo, Tom, and some other of his cronies, at the, uh, what was it, oh, the 03, 2003 Golden Boots Awards? At the Sportsman's yeah, I, Lodge, Tom. Sportsman's Lodge. I and then you hung Aldo. out with him, uh, I guess, with uh, Stella Stevens uh, at the awards, right, Tom? Yeah, my friend Don Bruce, the late Don Bruce, was researching all the Leone locations to do a book, which he hoped to get published and have the profits go to the actor's home in Woodland Hills. So when he was in Spain, he actually bought a condo, and then they rented it out while they were uh, back in the United States. They would go over two, three times a year for two or three weeks at a time, and they met Aldo. And Aldo was of great help because he was in so many spaghetti westerns. He knew all these locations. And then they also met Antonio Ruiz, who played the, the street urchin in for a few dollars more that Clint gets a little bit tired of because he keeps munching him for 50 cents here, a dollar there. <laughs> Anyways, um, might as well show it now, Tom. That's it. That's Aldo on the right there, and uh, Ted Marklin in the now, white. Who's the hat guy with the, the black hat with his red shirt with his back turned to us? Tom? My back turned to you, yeah. And then there's Jim Minorski's over there. That's true. And my friend John Crummett. But anyways, in 2003, they brought Aldo uh, over to the Golden Boot Awards. This is a pre-boot party which was held at the Sportsman's Lodge on Friday, 
and then the dinner would be on Saturday. So when we went to the the, uh, the dinner, Stella Stevens was there, and they were both in town called Hell. So it was the first time they had seen each other in 40 years or whatever. So that was great. And then when I went over to Spain in 2003 later, um, Aldo met me at the uh, Madrid airport. We hung around for two hours before I was able to fly down to um, Almeria. And uh, then we came back up to Madrid and we went to his office and met with his wife and had drinks at an uh, outdoor cafe and uh, had a great time. He was a very nice gentleman. Wow, I get to hang out with Aldo. That's so cool. Yep. So anyway, what Tom's going to do, he's going to give an intro onto his career, little little tidbits, and then I will start giving the reviews of the 10 or 11 movies that we f feel best represent his acting. Doesn't mean he, he was in other he was in other well-known films as I said, but these are the ones that he's featured the most. That I think he gets the most screen time. Although one of two of the films Tom I had trouble finding photos for. We just showed well, the sure poster. I'm sure you did. Yep. Yeah. Like it's, not, it's, not like he's, yeah, and... it's not like he's a well-known in the Google universe, right. but uh, but we know who he is. So anyway, Tom, what, why don't you tell us a the, little bit? The, yes, the ones the ones we don't cover, we'll just name and give his uh, character name. Well, I'll, I'll do that later, Tom, because we don't sure. want your uh, oh, I know your pacemaker to go off. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying we'll we'll name the film all the films that he was in. Well, we'll do that later. But first, Tom, yeah. give us a background on Aldo. Okay, Aldo Sambrell was born Alfredo Sanchez Brell on February 23rd, 1931 in Vallecas, Madrid, Spain. So as you can see, his actual name would have been Aldo Sanbrell, which he is credited sometimes, but like Robert Woods, they bastard it and they often called him Aldo Sam Brell. Anyways, he traveled to Mexico because his parents were living there in exile and there he became a professional soccer player for Puebla FC, where he was known as Madreleno Sanchez. He also played for CF Monterey. When he returned to Spain, he played for Acoinano and Real Valencano. So he was a soccer player before he became an actor. He then turned his attention towards being an actor. He became best known in the world of cinema for his roles as henchmen in Sergio Leone's Spaghetti Western films, portraying gang members in the trilogy of films, Fistful of Dollars, Few Dollars More, and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, as well as Once Upon a Time in the, West, Time in the West and Hundred Rifles. He also played the part of firing squad leader in A Fistful of Dynamite and a member of Sinbad's crew in The Golden Voyage of Sinbad. He also appeared alongside Jackie Chan in Armor of God, Operation Condor, where he plays a villain. He acted in many other Westerns, including including Sergio Carbucci's, where he co-starred alongside Burt Reynolds in Navajo Joe. It's probably his biggest role. He appeared in several international productions as an extra or bit actor, including Dr. Zhivago and The Wind and the Lion. He was married to Candina Lopez Cano, who appeared in films under the alias, alias Candace Kay, with whom he had a son, Alfredo Xavier, or Javier Sanchez Cavallero. Candida was Aldo's agent, as well as the agent for Frank Brana, Luis Barbu, and several other of the Spanish actors and character actors. Sergio Leone was Aldo's best man at their wedding and also godfather to his son, so he and Sergio were pretty tight. Because of his easygoing personality and being able to speak English as well as Spanish, he was often used as a diplomat on film locations and handled problems between crew and actors such as the case on Hanny Calder and the accused rape of Raquel Welch by Sancho Gracia. Aldo was one of the last and most prodigious of the Spanish character actors still making and acting in films up until the late 1990s. He died in Alicante, Spain on July 10th, 2010 from a cerebral infarcation at age 79, the result of three strokes he had suffered early in June. He was cremated and his ashes were spread on Fort Bravo, town site in Tabernas at the end of the Almeria Film Fest uh, in 2010. Uh, he also found Asbrell Productions in 1973 and made his own films, which is why Jay can't find a lot of information or pictures on him because they were small Spanish productions. That's right, Tom. And I'll just real quickly rattle down some of the films he made. Future, Fury of the Apaches, Billy the Kid, 
uh, Gunfight at High Noon, Gunfight at Red Sands, Gunfighters of Casa Grande, Find Me Another Spaghetti Western Star Who Made Three Consecutive Spaghetti Westerns with the word gunfight in them, <laughs> The Implacable Three, Fistful of Dollars, Massacre uh, at Fort Grant, Tomb of the, uh, the Pistolero, Two Violent Men, Dollars for a Fast Gun, uh, let's see, uh, Two Violent Men, I said, I said that already, for a few dollars more, In a Cold Shadow, we'll be showing that, uh, we'll be highlighting that, and Gunfighters at Casa Grande, Place Called Glory, Son of a Gunfighter, a Bullet for the General, Dynamite Jim, we'll be featuring that. Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Hellbenders will be featuring that. Navajo Joe will be featuring that. The Texican will be featuring that. Face to Face, Meant to Pray, Second to Die. Train for Durango, Via Rides, Bury Them Deep, Duel in the Eclipse, 15 Scaffolds for a Killer, Long Ride from Hell, Once Upon a Time in the West, White Comanche, Guns of the Revolution, 100 Rifles, Where Satan Grips the Colt, Arizona Returns, Cannon for Cordoba, Hanny Calder, Bad Man's River. He's bad, bad, bad. I always say that, Tom. <laughs> The Ballad of uh, Ben and Charlie, Duck You Sucker, Kill Django, Kill First, we'll be featuring that. Raise Your Hands, Dead Man, You're Under Arrest, we'll be featuring that. The aforementioned A Town Called Hell, Charlie One Eye, Hallelujah to Veracruz, The Man Called Noon. Uh, Shoshana, Tom? Yeah, Shoshina. Okay. Silver Saddle, Now My Pistol Speaks. Uh, of course, Aloeste de Rio Grande we'll be talking about. Yellow Hair in the Fortress of Gold. Uh, text in the Lord of the Deep, Zero, the legend continues. Here comes uh, Condomore. Yeah, or center the center of the, of the plains. plains. Yeah. God only knows. TV, he made Outlaw Justice. Once upon a time in Europe, he played himself in a docu. Sergio Leone's cinema, he played himself. And Tom Contra El Tiempo. Yep. Uh, Shoshin is also known as Tequila. Oh, okay. Thank you, Tom. I was wondering about that one. So yep. anyway, let's uh, start the review of uh, the 10 or 11 films we've decided to uh, feature. Oh, we already showed that. Well, there he is, Aldo. He's, look at that. I think he had a scar across his left uh, eyebrow, Tom. Yeah, I did. Across his nose, looks like, too. Or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's get to the... Um, uh, the reason I showed that, because that's from Once Upon a Time in the West, where he plays right. one of Cheyenne's uh, henchmen. But anyway, his first, uh, well, the one that he was featured in, is Gunfighters of uh, Casa Grande. And it's actually a not, not a bad film. It made in 63. It was a U.S.-Spanish uh, co-production. Directed by Roy Rowland, who did a lot of uh, films, American films. And uh, it's, it stars Alex Nichol and uh, also... Uh, Jorge Mistral, Steve Rollin, Dick Bentley, Phil Posner, Mercedes Alonso, my ex-wife, Deanna Loris, and Maria Granada, and Aldo Sombrell. And uh, the story is uh, Joe Daylight and his gang of robbers, ra or raiders, and the laughing kid, Doc and Henry, cross into Mexico, fleeing from an American posse. The plan is to meet with the rest of the gang and then divide the stolen money, but Joe tells his gunfighters that instead of uh, he has to use the money to buy a ranch. <laughs> I'm sure that didn't go over well. So the men protest, and they're soon brought into line and taken to a ranch by the Traveler, a new member of the game. The Traveler and the kid become acquainted and enjoy living in the Casa Grande. Of course, who wouldn't be when you get to meet Maria Gr um, Granada, Tom? Right. And uh, Joe, though, is uh, formulating a plan to rustle neighbors' cattle and drive the herd across the border where post-Civil War beef prices ensure a high profit. Lots of subplots, Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, a temporary interruption occurs when a gang of bandits led by uh, our good friend Aldo playing Red, Rojo, threatens the area, but Joe organizes the other ranchers for protection and they succeed in chasing Rojo away. By this time, the, conf the conflict among Joe's men has increased and most of them prefer to remain in Mexico. Joe responds to Doc's objections by shooting him. That always ends a good argument. <laughs> but Joe himself is killed by the traveler who has fallen in love with Maria. The two plan a new life together on the Casa Grande. So a uh, lot to take in. It's actually, as I said, it's a very good early production, Tom. Uh, the first ever to be uh, filmed in Spain. Tom. Hold on. Tom, what are you doing, Tom? There's a picture of... Aldo as Rojo. Oh, I'm glad you found one. Okay, cool. So you can see that, uh, you know, he was he was the pre-Fernando Sancho Mexican bandit. Right. Uh, Aldo has a, uh, he had a major role uh, playing the band leader whose gang is threatening the, um, 
the area, including Joe Daylight. I love that name. Hey, I'm Joe Daylight. Joe Daylight, yeah. Right. Uh, the film set the stage for major film productions in Italy and Germany and the U.S. Uh, to use Spain as a major film location. Uh, Tom has an interesting bit of trivia about the trailer, Tom. Yeah, the trailer for this film was the first to feature the voice of Don LaFontaine. At the time, he was a recording engineer and copywriter who replaced a scheduled announcer who didn't show up for the session. The rest, they say, is history. Um, a couple of weeks on my trivia in the blog, I've got I found the trailer with his voice on it, so you can hear. Oh, it. nice! Does you it begin to, with you, "In a World"? Yeah, if you don't want to wait, go to YouTube and put the Casa Grande trailer, and you'll hear it. Right. Well, his next film that uh, Aldo uh, appeared in was uh, for a few dollars uh, more. And, of course, with Clint, and that's also one of the legendary classic spaghetti westerns of all time. Uh, also, obviously, the Italian name is per uh, Quace Dolero in Piu. A 65 Italian-Spanish West German production, Tom, with Clint as the man with no name, or your name, Ma uh, Manco. Lee Van Cleef, LVC, is Colonel Mortimer. Obviously, Gian Maria Volante is El Indio. Uh, Klaus Kinski plays Wild, Luigi Pastilli is Groggy, Benito Stefanelli is Luke, and Mario Brega is Nino, and let's not forget Aldo Sombrell is Cuchillo. A, a ton of other great uh, faces are in that film, but we don't have the time to name them. But uh, you know the story, around the time of the Civil War, Manco is a cruel-eyed bounty hunter who brings in outlaws for money, dead or alive, but there's another bounty hunter in El Paso, Colonel Mortimer, who's a, a top marksman, both he and Manku are going after the same outlaw gang. A crew of bank robbers run by the dastardly Indio, uh, obviously GM Maria Volante. And after the two bounty hunters uh, size each other up as rivals, they decide to partner up and divide the profits in busting them up. Uh, of course, we've covered this many, many times, Tom. And yep. uh, even though uh, Cuchillo is not a big part, Tom, what's important about the role? Well, he's got a, a key role because uh, they pin, Gian Maria Volante pins a murder on him along with Mario Brega, and they shoot him, and they then they tell the rest of the gang that the bounty hunters, Mortimer and Manco, are the ones who killed Cuchillo, and he wants them captured, so they go out looking for him, and, uh, you know, they've, they're gunless they've given him guns but with no isn't ammunition. gm gm or even is <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> after he just murdered him yeah right right, right. so anyway great film he has a key role in the film yeah it's a very key role of course and that's one of the roles that we remember uh aldo sombrell from okay moving on to another film uh, yes. real, real quick on this one i added something after i sent it to you what's up in the scene where indio comes back after they bust him out of jail, he faces a guy named Tommaso, played by your friend Lorenzo Lobredo, and gives him a chance to face him face to face. And if you notice, in next to him, his Tommaso's wife and baby are standing there. He has the wife and baby go outside, which you hear two gunshots, meaning they disposed of his wife and kid to make him even madder to go after India. Anyways, the, the baby is played by Francesca Leone. And he's here today. Uh, Sergio's daughter, yes. Oh, okay. She's here today. Okay. <laughs> no, I wish. Anyway, so thank you, Tom, for that bit of information. Now we'll move on to the uh, next film that uh, Aldo was in, that he was featured in quite prominently, and that's in a cult shadow, uh, Alombra de una Colt, of course, and a 1966 Italian-Spanish co-production. And uh, I forgot to mention the director, uh, Giovanni Grimaldi. And... Uh, I forgot to mention the directors on the first ones, but I won't. I won't forget this time. Leone uh, we know and the story. Who was it, Tom? Leone. On well, Fist we knew Roland. that. What about for uh, Casa Grande? Roland. Oh, okay. oh, that's right. I did mention them. You did mention the, them. I'm, old age, Tom. Old age. Roy anyway, Roland. you know the story. After um, rescuing a uh, a Mexican village from a gang of harassing outlaws led by Aldo, playing Ramirez. Uh, uh, Stephen Forsythe, professional gunman, and Duke, Coronado, Conrado uh, San Martin separate. Duke, the older of the two, knows that Steve's in love with his daughter Susan, played by Anne Sherman, and because the girl does not want to live the life of a wanderer in constant danger, he asks Steve not to see her again or he will have to kill him. Okay. 
Steve does not believe the threats of his friend and says he will give up the gun for the girl he loves. So he changes his life and decides to become an honest farmer. That's nice, Tom. Mm -hmm. Uh, Steve and Susan come to Providence where the young man decides to farm. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. And uh, two powerful and unscrupulous individuals, Jackson played by Franco Russell and Burns, Franco Lantieri, have long been eyeing Susan. Now, who wouldn't? When the two <laughs> realize that Steve is winning the game against their henchmen, sent to drive him away, they call on Duke, but Duke does not take long to realize that Jackson and Burns have decided to kill the survivor of the battle. Steve then gives Duke a hand in killing all the assassins and their devious bosses. After the battle is finished, the two are again reunited in friendship. I'm sorry I don't have any more photos for this. I try to Google the heck out of it. And all I can come up with was this poster, unfortunately. But anyway, uh, Aldo Shines is the bandit leader. Ramirez, Tom, in the opening scene? Yeah, it's a very memorable role. And once you see him in it, you think he's going to be the villain throughout the film, but it's just a uh, prequel. But uh, his scenes are, he's in all black again, like he played El, uh, El Rojo in Gunfighters of Casa Grande. But uh, once you've seen the film, you remember that opening scene very well. Right, and uh, as we would fail to mention that before kind of Fernando Sancho took over, Aldo Sombrao was the main bad character in these movies, right, Tom? Yeah, he seemed to be uh, the guy they went to to play the main villain, at least early on. Right, and thank God he did for 58 films, Tom. That's so many, so many to, to be in it. And I remember when we did the Fernando Sancho show, we did get every single film, and there was a four-and-a-half-hour show. So now you know why, because Tom and I are getting up there in age. Tom's wearing a ticker, and I've got a, an arrest belt around my ankle. So we've got to do only the best of. But anyway, the next film that he made is one of the... It's actually a pretty good film. It's called Dynamite Jim. And uh, 1966 Italian-Spanish co-production, directed by Alfonso Granda. And uh, 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 Luis de Villa... Uh, plays Dynamite Jim. Fernando Sancho is in this, so you got the two baddies. Uh, Rosalba Neri, one of our favorite actresses, and Maria Pia Conte. Uh, the story goes, let's see if I can find the poster. Poster. There it is. Um, in, eight, in, 19, in 1865, during the American Civil War, Dynamite Jim, Luis de Villa, uh, de Villa, a northern spy encounters a mysterious character, who uh, enlists for help in, in an important mission. Jim's hired to transport a great treasure hidden in a coffin. To reach his final destination, he must cross dangerous southern lines. Jim ho hopes to elude the Confederate Army while keeping the gold on its course, accompanied by the beautiful Rosalba Neri, Margaret, a beautiful dancer who will guide him through the territory, and Pablo uh, Reyes, Fernando Sancho, a Mexican who's very interested in the treasure. I'm very interested in the treasure. Um, <laughs> The trio encounters several uh, adventures with a crooked banker, a Mexican bandit, and greed among themselves before reaching the elusive location. Uh, this was one of three Dynamite characters' uh, films, Dynamite Jack, Dynamite Jim, Dynamite Joe, and I think you forgot the fourth one, Tom, Dynamite Betts. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So uh, coffins were a hiding staple in Spaghetti Western, so people love to hide in coffins, Tom. Yeah, I wonder if this precedes Hellbenders. Right. And uh, Aldo played Slade, an evil outlaw. I mean, there's a, that's a great name for an outlaw, Slade. Mm -hmm. And who he plays the leader of, of uh, who, Tom? He plays the leader of a... Uh, he plays an evil outlaw who's out to get the gold being transported by Dynamite Jim. He's the leader of a bunch of thugs following the orders of, a, of the Crooked Banker we talked about. The Crooked Banker. Right. So it's him against Aldo. I mean, Aldo against Fernando in this one. Right, it's true, but they're both together, which is which mm -hmm. is nice. So anyway, so the next Spaghetti Western with Aldo Sembrell, who we thought we would feature today, is the classic. Tom and I agree it's his best role, and it's obviously a classic. Too bad Tom, uh, Burt Reynolds doesn't think so, but it's Navajo Joe. And Navajo Joe is a great film. Um, it's so funny. Uh why he would go, he would try to disown it, Tom, right? He would, uh, Bert would say, oh, I forget about that film. No, Bert, it's a great movie. So a lot of these uh, actors, American actors would go to Italy and make a film and they'd be, you know, 
they'd, they'd hate it. Oh, I didn't like the film. No, it's a classic. Did he ever, before he died, Tom, did he have a reassessment or did he always hate no, it till I, the end? I, th I think two things. First of all, when they said that he was going over and filming with Sergio, he assumed it was Sergio Leone <laughs> instead of Sergio Corbucci, which he had never heard of. Oh, man, wrong so, Sergio. Yeah, I think that, that always was a, uh, you know, that always stuck in his craw. The other thing I think he liked to do was say it was the most worst movie of all time, just to have the, who were talking to him come back and say, no, it wasn't that bad. You were really good in it, you know. Sort right. of self-adulation, yeah. So, of course, Burt Reynolds is Navajo Joe before he actually came to to big-time fame. Uh, Nicol Nicoletta Machiavelli, one of Tom's favorites, is Estella. Uh, Lucio Rosado, Fernando Rey. And Peter Cross are in this film, as well as Aldo, and a bunch of other faces that we all recognize. Uh, you know the story, a gang of uh, sadistic outlaws led by half-breed Duncan, which is Sambrell. His brother, they hunt down Indians and sell their scalps for a dollar. Gee, I don't, I don't know. Is that pretty lucrative, Tom? I guess in those days, a dollar yeah. is a dollar. So in town, they're told that their services are no longer needed. You think? But one of the citizens tells him about half a million dollars that will be transported to the town of Esperanza. He can open the safe if they can steal it. So the brothers attack the train and kill the passengers. But their plans are thwarted by Navajo Joe. Burt Reynolds comes to save the day. He has sworn to avenge his murdered tribesmen and therefore steals the train and with the unopened safe and rides it into town. He is, of course, captured by the gang and brutally torture Tom, some great brutal torture scenes, especially when uh, Bird is hanging upside down. Mm -hmm. And he gets some help from the saloon girl and a banjo player who is good with a slingshot. I knew that those would come in handy, Tom. <laughs> he then lures the Duncan brothers to the Indian graveyard where all the people of his, of his tribe were slaughtered by the gang are buried. So great film, great typical Carbucci, Tom. Aldo's biggest role and you, know, you, you and I both feel he should have been a bigger star after that. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, first of all, they hired Bert for another reason, the fact that he could do his own stunts. So they saved on hiring stuntmen. And then the great scene of Aldo in the uh, graveyard getting the tomahawk in the forehead. That's always memorable. But, I yeah, love I that scene. He was such a, such a good actor in this and played the heavy so well that he should have been, you know, elevated to a higher level. Right. Uh most of the Spanish uh, character actors in this are mostly Aldo's band of scalp hunters. So they just go around just cutting scalps. Uh, the lovely uh, Nicoletta Machiavelli has a major role. She spoke English, but Bert paid little attention to her between scenes. How is that possible, Tom? Yeah, I'd, I always wondered about that. I don't know if he knew that she spoke English or figured she spoke broken English, but she spoke English well. She used to teach at Washington State University. Uh, in later years and taught Italian to the students. So she could speak English and Italian as well together, yeah. Right. So after Navajo Joe, he, uh, Aldo returned and worked, well, I don't know right away, but he returned, as I said, we're just picking the top 10 or 11 that we feel he was best featured in. Uh, he was in a, The Hellbenders, Tom, with uh, Joe Cotton and uh, or, uh, E. Crudelli, and it's another Spanish co-production. And it was directed, as I said, by Sergio Carbucci, Joe Cotton, um, Norma Bengel, uh, Julian Mateos, Gino Pernice, Angel Aranda, Aldo, and of course, our good friend Al Mullock, Tom. Al Mullock, yep. Right. Uh, we all know uh, the story. Let's just see if I can find the poster. That's not it. There it is. There you go. So this, the Civil War is over. But not for Colonel Jonas, played by Joseph Cotton, a ruthless Confederate soul officer who wants to continue the fighting by reorganizing Confederate troops in the Southwest with the support of a large sum of stolen money. Sounds very similar to Five Man Army, doesn't it, Tom? <laughs> yeah, they all got money. <laughs> he devises an elaborate uh, uh, plan to allow his small party to travel with minimal scrutiny through territories, and which are now controlled and patrolled by Union forces. Uh, the money is hidden in a coffin. Uh, hint, hint, that happens in quite a few Carbucci movies, like maybe Django. And uh, well, instead of money, that, that, that's obviously a machine gun. And it contains the body of his dead son, 
Jonas's other sons travel with him along with a hired widow. You don't find too many of those, Tom. <laughs> no. And they proceed to what they hope to be a new start to the war between the states. However, while en route, they face um, severe ongoing strife among themselves and uh, successive threats from Union soldiers and a posse of cowboys and an Indian war party uh, ensue. Uh, Aldo's role of a uh, of a dead bear, uh, of a dead bandit buried at Union Fort only to find him reappear again later. What's that all about, Tom? Um, they come across Aldo and his gang of thieves and they, he ends up getting killed. So for whatever reason, Jonas takes his body to the nearest fort and they watch him being buried. But at the end of the movie, <laughs> when they're all gone, the, the, the coffin floats down into the river and as they open it up, the money is no longer there. They've gone back and dug up the wrong coffin. It's Aldo in the coffin staring back at him. Yep. Wow. Okay. So it's, again, small role, oh. but it's a crucial role in the film. Oh, absolutely. Usually he does have a crucial role or something happens to him that is crucial to the story. Um I just noticed something, Tom, unfortunately. I don't know if um, I accidentally uh, deleted the... I'm up late, folks, doing all the preparation. I always wait till the last minute to do this. Tom knows that I have a pot of coffee, and at 4 a.m. I put the show together. But I don't know if I added the Texican poster or any photos from the Texican. How could I forget that? Because it's, you know, Deanna Laura's, my ex-wife, is in that. Well, that's probably why you probably got them stashed. Or <laughs> right. in the I mean, I got a stash of her photos <laughs> that I just can't yeah. stop looking at. Maybe but, your wife uh, found it. Right. But I'll, I'll uh, give a review of The Texican and what it's about, uh, also known as The Texas Kid or El Tejano, a 1966, another uh, Spanish co-production. And um, Nico Fidenko, Tom, sings, yeah, the, uh, sure. sings the song, the classic song. Stars Audie Murphy, uh, Broderick Crawford, Diana Loras, as I said, Aldo, and Antonio Casas. Let's not forget Luz Marquez, the, the beautiful Maria Soler. But uh, the story goes that um, Jess Carlin uh, resides safely in Mexico. He's wanted north of the border for a crime he didn't commit. When he hears his brother has been killed in a gunfight with another man, he takes a chance and crosses over the border. Knowing his brother never, ca uh, never carried, he intends on finding his brother's murderer. After a shootout with bounty hunters, he arrives in Rimrock. That's a classic town controlled by <laughs> Luke Starr and Broderick Crawford. And uh, Star is the man he wants, but he's unable to find any evidence until he's given an item found by his brother's body. It's a roll that matches the ones on Luke Star's holster that just happens to be the missing one, Tom. Uh -oh, that's uh, the key. Yeah. Just confronts, confronts Luke at his salute, and after another shootout with Star's henchmen, he goes one-on-one -on -one with Star and kills him. And Tom, Audie Murphy always looks like uh, he walked off a soundstage. Yeah, he always wears the same clothes, usually a checkered <laughs> shirt, pair of jeans, white hat. Uh, a couple of the bigger films he was in, like with Jimmy Stewart or whatever, he changes his look. But in the Audie Murphy starring Westerns, he looks the same. And he looks exactly that, just like that in the Texican. That's the only thing I didn't like was his outfit. Yeah, it was very Gene Autry, Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, Broderick Crawford, way past his prime and probably had one too many, Tom. Probably. Right. Uh, but that's why we watch it, Tom. We want to see him stumble over his lines. That's the whole point. Uh, of course, my ex-wife, Deanna Loris, plays the love interest and immediately caught Jay's eye when he first saw the film. <laughs> I can't blame him. Aldo plays Gil Rio, a hired gun, and Crawford's bodyguards. He's in many, many scenes and other of his memorable performances. So coming up next, Tom... We have uh, Kill Django, Kill First. Uh, not a bad film. Uh, Usido Django, also for some reason called Tequila, but not to be confused with another Tequila. It's a 71 Italian-Spanish um, co-production. And uh, it stars uh, Giacomo Rossi Stewart. And Aldo is a co-build uh, co with Doris uh, Christinelle. And, of course, George Wang. Our which favorite. we love. And Deanna Loris is in this one, too, is yep. Anna Vega. And uh, directed by Sergio Garone, or Garone. Uh, you know the story, a banker named Burton, played by Aldo, 
has had a past as a bandido known as Santana, not to be confused with yeah. the Santana that we know of. Or Sabata or Sartana or whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, or Indio Black. Yeah. Uh, after a bloody raid on a homestead, Santana double crosses his own men and ran off with the loot. Um, no, Santana did that. Uh, with the help of the money, he later uh, becomes the banker and a town boss. At least that's what we're supposed to believe. Johnny McGee, played by Jack Stewart, fights the banker, Burton, who tries to acquire, with the help of the strange bandit, Martinez, played by George Wang, in an unlawful way, an unlawful way, in all the gold mines in the area. So as we said, Aldo plays uh, the ex-bandit Santana and... Uh, and the unscrupulous banker Burton in a major role, and Jack Stewart's good looks uh, made him perfect for the role, the leading role as the good guy. Uh, and his blonde hair looks very American, and of course, Chris Donnell adds window dressing as Lupe, or Molly, Tom, Lupe Molly. Mm -hmm. Yep, and, always got to have different names. And right, different and versions. George Wang steals the show as usual. Uh, what do you think about this film, Tom? I actually enjoy it. Yeah, I liked it very much. Uh, like I said, Giacomo... Rossi Stewart, Jack Stewart, um, you could swear he was an American actor. He had blonde hair, very handsome, uh, was in quite a bit of uh, roles as a supporting actor, uh, but uh, he comes off very well. And uh, again, Aldo steals the show as the, as the main villain. Right. And anyways, uh, speaking of stealing the show again, uh, Aldo's uh, next film that we're going to feature is Raise Your Head, Raise your hands, dead man, you're under arrest. Um, also known as, uh, I guess, uh, Un Dolor para Santana. I don't know why it would be called that, a dollar for Santana. But Peter Lee Lawrence, the great Peter Lee Lawrence, uh, plays Kid Johnson. Uh, Espartico Santoni is in this, as well as the beautiful Helga Linné and Aldo plays Lee Grayson. And let us uh, show the poster. Uh, anyway, story is a Texas Ranger, the Sando Kid. When does Peter Lee Lawrence not play a character called the Kid, Tom? Kid, yeah, he's like, exactly. Take, take advantage of his looks. Right. He's disguised as a perfume salesman. That's what I would go around um, <laughs> disguised as. Yeah. He's sent to clean up the town of Springfield. So it starts off kind of like the sheriff or fractured jaw before it gets interesting. Yeah, um, he's a he's a Civil War conscientious objector. So uh, right. when he who gets is out of there? He's a perfume. Salesman. Well, the town boss, played by Aldo, uh, is a former Northern Army captain, and he's forcing ranchers to sell their land cheap so he can buy it and sell it to the approaching railroad. Yeah, I mean that's mm. who wouldn't. The ranger eliminates Grayson, so there goes Aldo and his gang of thugs, and ends up marrying Dora Leonore, played by Mary Zan, the daughter of one of the ranchers. Uh, we did cover this extensively in the Peter Lee Laurie, Peter Lee Laurie, Peter Lee Lawrence episode. Um, as I said, he plays a conscientious objector to the Union Army. To keep the appearance of a weakling, he disguises himself as a perfume salesman. Not exactly how I would do it, Tom. <laughs> Aldo well, looks like uh, Malachi Thro uh, Thorn or Throne <laughs> from... Uh, Many uh, American TV movies, including It Takes a Thief, Malachi Throne. Anyway, uh, Aldo is a cold-blooded Union captain, and um, he actually dresses up in a couple different outfits, Tom. Um, yeah, he's, well, he's the banker. He can afford to. Oh, right. Exactly. He can pay for it. And he also shoots survivors of the Confederate Army. At a Confederate ambulance station, he meets a young medic played by Peter Lee Lawrence. He gives him a colt and his orders to kill the injured, but the Sando kid denies it. With the help of a friend, uh, he survives. Uh, another, another good film in their Peter Lee Lawrence au revoir, Tom. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, anyway, we're still continuing on with our salute to Aldo Sombrell. And we want to thank everybody for joining us here on YouTube every Saturday at noon Pacific time, high noon. Uh, and then we later archive it to Facebook. And then the audio version will later turn up on iTunes. So the next film, Tom, we're entering uh, a later period. And it's um, west of the Rio Grande. Not something that I would have picked 
to feature, but Tom is the expert in this. I just go along whatever Tom says. A 1983 production, Tom. I probably would have stopped at 75. But uh, anyway, directed by Jose Maria Zabalza, uh, Aloesto de Rio Grande, Aldo stars as Juan Sanchez. The beautiful Candace Kay is in this, as well as Dan Barry, that, better known as Remember, Joaquin. that's his wife. That's Aldo's wife. Oh, in real life? Yeah. Oh, okay. Joaquin Sainz and Michael Rivers, Miguel de la Riva. And uh, it's not bad. I mean, I had to watch a little bit of it to, uh, before the episode. It's, it's like a Spanish Western. I didn't see too many of those spaghetti Western. Um, I don't know, Tom, if you wouldn't have told me this wasn't a spaghetti Western, I wouldn't have believed it. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I just wanted to point out to the viewers that uh, there were spaghetti Westerns made after the peak was over in the late 70s. And some of these you might read, but go have no idea what these things are about. So I thought I'd cover them. No, no problem, Tom. It's good. It's a, he stars in this film. Yep. It's probably the most screen time he's had in any of his films, Tom. Yep. So in the American West, after the Civil War, the disputes between the Northern and Southern sympathizers continues to erupt into violence. A woman faces a desperate struggle when she searches for help for her husband, who has been trapped under some timbers at the edge of the sea. She meets hanging judges, assorted outlaws, vigilantes, natives, Indian haters, and bounty hunters. So, uh, as I said, very small cast. It's probably a, a labor of love. Was, was Aldo involved in the producing of this, Tom? Uh, I, does, I, don't, I don't see his name anywhere that I could say he okay. was. He probably, some, sometimes these small films that come after the, sure. you know, you think they got involved in some way. But anyway, uh, his wife is in this, uh, Kadita, as the shun and despised ex-Confederates uh, after the Civil War. Uh, according to, to Aldo, director uh, Zimbala was not untypically, uh, I guess, so drunk on the set as he was barely able to function, as it shows in his atrocious direction, Tom. <laughs> um, Jay, this is about a guy that's stuck in the edge of the ocean with some timbers that are pinning him down, and his wife goes for help and runs into all these people that deny her any help. In the meantime, the tide's rolling in, so we see Aldo with the water starting at his knees and then it's up to his waist and then it's up to his chest. So it's a more dramatic than anything else, but you'll, you'll see the direction, the water levels going up and down, you know, one time it's at his chest, then it's down at his waist and then it's back up to his chest. So. Oh, quick cuts, Tom. Direction. I guess they didn't want to film the whole, right. The whole thing. Okay. That's fine. Let's see. What do we have? Oh, of course we would be, Remiss if we didn't mention yellow hair in the Fortress of Gold. This actress, Tom, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was in a wrestling movie. Oh, yeah. I forgot what it was called. It was a bunch of wrestlers. And um, I mean, I just watched it for the for the babes in the in the tight in the tights. Mm -hmm. But anyway, here she is again. Oh, Lauren Landon, of course. OK, uh, this also stars Ken Robertson and John Gaffari, Luis Lorenco. Claudio Gravi, Aldo, of course, as Flores, and Eduardo Fajardo appears for a second, Tom. Yeah, this is the last hurrah for the Spanish character actors. If you, want, if you even want to call it that. Yeah. But anyway, the story is yellow hair and her sympathetic, courageous sidekick, the Pecos Kid, or after a treasure of gold in the Aztec uh, temple, told in a 1940s serial style, Yellow hair, a val valiant warrior whose origins are unknown. Of course they are, Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, she was adopted into a tribe of fierce Comanches uh, along with her faithful sidekick, the Pecos Kid. They have run-ins with an army of Mexican soldiers commanded by an effeminate general. Aren't they all, Tom? <laughs> uh, a gang of dastardly outlaws led by Flores, a mean saloon owner named Tortuga, and a deadly tribe of Aztec warriors led by a fearsome Aztec chieftain named Shia Watiwa, uh, while searching the countryside for the golden treasure. Uh, oh, we already showed that. Let's get back to the old photo. Um, this thrilling and stirring movie has full of imagination and fantasy, which introduces us to this brave heroine, a female warrior of strength, a hunter of men. Along the way, yellow hair finds her mother slain and takes a vow of lethal vendetta until one day 
she meets her match. And Aldo there plays Flores, the Mexican bandit, who leads his gang of cutthroats in a search for the gold. And as you said, this is probably the last roundup of the spaghetti western genre. Tom, I am a completist, but I would not add this to my collection. Yeah. <laughs> So if it wasn't um, for you, I would have never heard of this film. Th this starts off with a bunch of kids in an audience looking at the screen, and they become part of the film as like, what? What's the um, the two thousand movie? The uh, which one? Where they they cr critique a film, and they, you see the shadows in the audience. Just, oh, I don't know, Tom. Uh, I'll think of it. Anyways, they interact with the people on screen. They come in and they introduce Lorene Landon. So all they cheer and whistle and whatever. Then the villain appears and they all boo and hiss and whatever. Oh, I so see. So it's supposed to be like a, a 1940s serial. Yeah, but it, uh, and it even starts with like, this is chapter three or something, so. Wow, okay. Sounds like Gwendolyn in the land of the Yik Yak, Tom. <laughs> yeah, right. Remember that one? I, I met her, Lorene Landon, at one of the uh, Hollywood collector show. She didn't want to talk about this. She's film tall, huh? Tall, Tom. She's oh, like yeah, an Amazon. She's big. She's big yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Big. She's right. big. She'd a lot rather of talk about all the marbles, right, Tom? <laughs> Which was the wrestling film that I was trying to think about. Anyway, so there's our salute to uh, Aldo Sembrell, but it, that's the, our review part of the movies. As I said, I go back and watch, and I went by all the films. You can slow it. Put it on slow speed and you'll listen to all the films he's in if you want to catch them. Great character actor, one of the all-time greats, up there with Mario Brega um, and um, uh, uh, Fernando Sancho and uh, even Eduardo Fajardo. So, yep. right, those guys help make the spaghetti western genre what it is. Without the, those bad guys, it would just be Clint shooting everybody. But anyway, the, the fun doesn't stop here, Tom. Tom, uh, we have, we're bringing back, as I said, some old segments. So in the sticking with the Aldo Sambrell theme, we have Book of the Week, which Tom will now share with everybody. Um, when I visited with Aldo in 2003, he had just had a biography written about him called Aldo Sambrell, La Marada Mas Despiadada. And uh, he gave me a copy of it. Uh, it's autographed. It's in Spanish. Got lots of pictures, complete filmography. And Jay, I looked this up the other day to see if it was still available. And I only found it, I think, at Abe Books, but I'm not positive. But they wanted $146 for it, plus $33 to ship it. And this is a paperback. Anyway, so it's worth about $180. That's the only one I could find. Must be way out of print and hard to find, Tom. Yeah, so if I, if I were looking for it, I'd probably try and contact some Spanish bookstores and see if you could buy it through them. But that's right. the uh, book of the week. That's a book that should be translated into English. Yep. I mean, what a great... I mean, think about that. What a great book. So anyway, uh, now continuing on with uh, segments that were lost but brought back, we continue... Um, I guess we'll do autographs of the week, Tom. You want to go first? Sure. I've talked about this in several. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let's make it official. Tom, do the introduction. Say, here's autographs of the week. Here's autographs of the week. Okay. I've talked about this autographs in several episodes involving Steve Reeves and uh, seeing him at a Hollywood collector's show and bemoaning the fact that he had no pictures of Westerns out there, just sword and sandal Western uh, pictures. So he said, you like Westerns? I said, yeah. So he reaches under the table and pulls out a picture and then he autographed it for me. And I finally found it. This nice. is the, uh, the still, isn't that good? Yeah, that's from uh, Long Ride from Hell. Of course it is, Tom. And then I guess my autograph of the week, Tom, this is one I, you know, we did all our autograph shows and we went through all my almost nearly 100 autographs that I have, but I never showed this one. So here's a treat. Okay, I hope I up uploaded it. Where is it? There it is, Tom. Oh, Jay let's Jennings. get my name out of there. Good luck. 
That's what he always used to write on all his autographs. Leave, Lee, it just says Lee Cleep. <laughs> There's a van in there, Tom. Okay, okay. But anyway, with an original French lobby inside. So this is one of my treasured autographs. Oh, yeah. I enjoy it quite a bit. So I forgot to show this during season one, so I thought I'd share it now. So anyway, that's it for the autographs. Uh, Never the week too late segment. To show Lee. Yeah. And so now uh, we're going to, before we get to the weekly news, we're bringing back another favorite segment. So everybody, uh, get ready. And we're going to show what Tom likes to call Tom's Poster Attic. <laughs> Okay, Jay just likes to see if I can rip up my posters. I hope not, Tom, because when you will these to me, they'll be in terrible shape. That's right. Okay. <laughs> these are all going to be Aldos and the, and the films that we covered. So the first one is Gunfighters of Casa Grande. Okay. This is the German poster. Oh, that's nice, Tom. Here, hold it. There you go. That's a great one. You know I love when pistols are firing. Yep. That one looks like it's still in good shape, Tom, so be careful with that one. <laughs> I think I spoke too soon. No, that's good. Then this is the uh, the U.S. poster, which I think oh, they are. showed. That's a great believe, one, Tom. I believe you showed that when you went over the film. Yep. That's an yes. early poster, Tom. Steve Rowland in here is the director's son, Roy Rowland, who's still alive. Lives in Palm Springs, but I've been unable to contact him. Then we go to for a few dollars more, and we've seen a bunch of these, so I'll just show some I haven't shown. This is the Japanese. Yep, of course, awesome $2 poster. $2 more. And then the uh, Belgian poster. Yep, I know that one well. Okay, and then we go to an occult shadow, Belgium. That's a nice one, because, Tom, you know I have the Yugoslavian one. Diana Loris. There she is, my ex-wife. <laughs> and then I've got also the Japanese poster for In a Cult Shadow, which is... That is nice. You know that, yeah. They use that kind of similar guy, with the shadow of the guy with the holster in a lot of posters. Yeah. And then we've got... GM, GM, Dynamite Jim. Okay, remember, that was featured, taken from, you can tell, those Pulp Fiction novels, Tom. Oh, yeah, early ones. This was also featured, remember, in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It was one of Leo DiCaprio's. Oh, that's right. It's a complete film. takeoff on that, yeah. Exactly, yep. Then I've got uh, American Hellbenders. That's the one everybody has if you're a Hellbenders fan. Yep. That's the half sheet. You didn't even bother then, folding that. That was very wise, it's, Tom. It's heavy <laughs> paper. Well, that's a different one, Tom. Novel very Bert. nice. That's the German. Yep. Because usually every poster of that has Bert um, hanging upside, hanging upside down. down. Yeah. Yep. And th like this one, you mean? Yeah. This is the Belgian. That is the Belgian. Yep. And that is it. I don't have any from the, the last three or four we covered. Was that it, Tom? That's it. There's Tom's poster attic, which we always enjoy. Thank you, Tom, for sharing. Hopefully not too many more creases, rips, or tears, nope. or edging were added to that. There's no posters we were this. harmed during the making of that <laughs> segment, right. Tom. That's right. So anyway, thank you so much. And now we're getting to what another favorite segment. This is like a, a retro segment, Tom. We're bringing back all the old uh, season one um, segments. And so we would be remiss if we didn't have Tom's weekly news, which begins now. All right. I'm sure you're all going to be excited about this one, but there's a new German children's Euro Western that's just been released in late October called Der Junji Hauptling Winnetou, or in English, The Young Chief Winnetou. It's directed by Mike Marzuk, starring Mike Ulritz as Winnetou, Milo Hoff as Tom Silver, 
Lola Lene Podatsky as Nisho Tishi and Mamet Katulis as Inshu Tishuna. It's easy for you to say, Tom. I know. I should have had you read read this one. The film tells the story of the 12-year-old Winnetou, son of Inshu Tishuna, who is of the opinion, opinion that his son is still a lot to learn. When the absence of the buffalo threatens the Indian people, Winnetou seizes the chance to prove himself to his father. Together with the orphan Tom, he embarks on a dangerous adventure to save the Apache people. Tatunga, Tatunga. And then we have uh, two passings. Uh, rest in peace, Gwyneth Guthrie. She was a Scottish actress who died at her home on November 11, 2021. She was 84. Guthrie was born in Ayr- Ayrshire, Scotland on April 28, 1937. Her father was a banker and her mother's family came from Cumbria. As a child, she had a quick ear and a passion for mimicry. At the age of 12, she had first read a story for Auntie Kathleen on radio's Children's Hour. By that time, she could speak three languages. Gwyneth appeared as the lady in black in the 1973 TV film Hawkeye the Pathfinder, starring Paul Massey. And German cinematographer and cameraman Paul Zeisch died in Berlin, Germany on November 3rd. He was 65. Zeisch was born in East Berlin on May 5, 1935. He worked with knowledgeable directors such as Frank Beyer, Roland Graf, Siegfried Kuhn, and Lothar Warnecke. After working at Difa Studios for a time, he became a freelance worker and became a wanted cameraman in the German film and television business. For his work in Bern Salling's successful youth film, Die Blindganger, in 2004, he was nominated for the German Camera Award. Zeiss was the cinematographer in the 2014 modern day TV Euro, Winnetou's Weaver, which is Winnetou's Women. And that's it for the news. Winnetou's Women. Women too. Give me my women. Where's my 50 women? <laughs> Who are these old hags? But anyway, Tom, thank you for, for that weekly news. And um, now we're all up to date and caught up in the world of spaghetti westerns. So I want to thank all of you uh, who are joining us live and who will be watching this later archived here on YouTube and on Facebook. So uh, I just want to say thank you for uh, staying with us, our loyal fan base. And next week, we'll have another riveting episode of the Spaghetti Westerns podcast. So Tom, what do we always say? Adios, amigos. Tom says adios, amigos. And I always say adios, compañeros.